It's the time for the muddy side of the retro game handheld. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, it's awesome that you're tuning in. So in today's video we are going to talk about the Retroid, but this is part number two. And the reason why is very simple. So in the first part I did an unboxing about this handheld, so if you want to see more about the product itself and even in a little teardown, you can check it out the first version, leave a link in the description. But for now let's take a close look at the dual boot function. So in the previous video I just did an unboxing, I just wanted to show you if you don't get the device with dual boot or what are you going to get i did notice some people were confused and but i do wanted to make a two-part video and maybe that was not a really good idea but at the end the end it would be a video of 20 minutes and more but nevertheless we are going to take a close look at the retro today we're going to check the dual boot how it looks how it works and what are we going to get with the other side because this thing is now with open android and we having the old kind of software like the previous model very curious so let's go all right, so with the previous video, I spoken about the Android device that is inside this little me machine and about the specifications. But nevertheless, we're going to not focus on this. We're going to zoom in. We're going to the extra apps because I just wanted to show you the Retroid app. If you don't have this on this, you're going to get like in the previous video, I need to add it yourself. Nevertheless, let's boot it up. What is very unique, what you can do is when you're clicking on it, you need to reboot the device itself and it will give you a different menu. Similar like the previous model, that you have in this very fancy, nice menu. As you can see, it takes some time to boot up, so let's skip, skip, skip. My desk is not very clean. It's not good. All right, so let's take a close look at the menu. And for the people who already have seen the previous video, you see that the menu is basically similar like the previous model. So what you're going to get, giving a quick like, let's say a wrap up for the people who are just new to this product. So this menu is basically the same like the Pandora Games 3D or the Pandora Saga 3D. I really love the fancy menu and what you already can see when I'm moving up and down, you can see the preview changes and we go to the next game. Now we are here in the all list, so pressing right and left, you go to the next page. Okay, so let's press start. That means you're going up to the search function because we're having a search function over here. Let's go up to the little bar over here so you can go to the next one. So you're having the recent list. Here we have your categories, so that is very nice. You can switch between the different kind of games. Give you a little overview. We're having PSP, PlayStation, N64, PC Engine, NES, 16-bit stuff, Game Boy. We have a card, some different things. Oh. They fixed the menu, little icon, because in the previous model or the Pandora boxes it was a little Xbox logo. Nevertheless, we're having a wide range support on the naughty side of the Retroid Pocket. What is also possible when you're holding the home button, you will go to the other menu. Here you have some handheld settings, key settings and all the other stuff and even you can change it the language. And let's see what we're having here, some Asian languages. And let's give it more. I don't know why this is, but somehow we're having the Spain language and English and two Asian languages. All right, so, and this is very interesting. When you, when you basically want to go back to the Android version, you go to the Switch system. What it does, basically it reboots and you're going to go back to the Android. So that's pretty awesome. But nevertheless, let's test some games and let's see how they are running. With the Red Road, the naughty side. I must say the audio is pretty horrible in this thing. Compared with all the other devices like the Retro Game 350. The display itself looks amazing. Mm-hmm. Alright. Loading, loading, loading. Mm. 
No, I'm gonna say Traversa Route. Funny thing is, I am a D-pad guy, but with this device I'm always playing with the analog stick. And I think it's more of, not because this is a clicky D-pad, it plays way better than the previous model, because of the shape. But I think this is because the analog stick is exactly the position that I'm always using in D-pad. So what is really convenient with the Retroid Pocket, and let's say the Pandora menu, you're having the quick load, quick save option. So far I know that it doesn't apply to every emulator. There are some arcade and some other stuff that doesn't work with this, but most of them are. So that's pretty cool and very convenient. Of course, a bit will not be a problem for this device. I must say, the play the D-pad plays very nice for games like this. E -e 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 -e. Don't hear any sound issues with the NES because a lot of these old games have some problems with the cheap devices, but that is not an issue with this Android machine. And this is something that I'm having a very big issue with the Super D pad. I really need to get used to it. Did you see it? Did you see it? I have a freaking handicap, my friends. I'm getting my ass kicked. But again, the D-pad plays so nice for games like this. And now with the new shape, it's a big improvement over the other version. I... All the sound effects are here, so far I can hear. Now for some Mega Drive. And the reason why I choose this game very often is very, not because it's a fighting game, and I love this game, don't get me wrong, but I can basically dream these soundtracks. I've played the game so much. And let's take a look for a
I must say I find a little bit of a shame that we're having this black bar here at the top. Yeah, that is a really downside. As you can see, it doesn't go away, and I've really no clue if you can change it. Oh yeah, guys, you know what I'm going to say? I'm gonna take you for a ride. I wanna take you for a Alright, so let's do the ultimate main test, Mortal Kombat. I do hear and sound interference. I have no idea where the buttons are, but... It's a shame of the sound interference or this little weird noise that I'm hearing, but... I didn't notice that the... I didn't notice that the... That run too well. Awesome. I see with the PHP we're still having the same issues that we're having the two black bars on the top and the bottom. Hmm. Well, I'm very curious how this thing even runs PHP because in the previous model there are some limitations. Take some time. A very long time. Yoo hoo. Ah, uh, you. Yeah. Take your pet. Last to show you. Challenge one. Are you ready? Sounds good, it runs pretty decent. Yep, going to lose my game again. And the second one. Alright, so this is what you're going to get with the naughty side of the Retroid. I must say, if you don't have the app installed, it's very easy to do. But again, I just wanted to show you here in part of how the dual boot works and what you're going to get with the menu. If you want to have more information regarding the product quality, you can always check the different other video. The D-pad itself, I don't like it. I don't. I still don't like it. It works for some games. I really need to get used to the clicky D-pad. The analog stick is well, it plays fine. It's a very huge handheld, so it plays very nice and comfortable for a very long time. The search function is a very good addition. I love this. Nevertheless, if this is a big improvement over the last version, in many ways, yes. But maybe next time we we'll talk about that one. Well, I thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell, look one of the Wicked family. And if you have any questions, you can always leave it in the comments. It's the Retroid, it's the Retroid, it's the naughty handheld from China. Yeah. <laughs>